You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. Well, welcome back to the Batuta Advocate News Bulletin. The date is Monday the 6th of January, recording live here from the Old City District. You're joined by myself, Clancy Overall, editor of the Batuta Advocate, editor at large, Errol Parker. How are you, Errol? Good, mate. Good to be back. Another new year. Looking forward to another year of wasting my life here in the Simpson Desert at this stupid irrelevant newspaper you like the cricket though you've been enjoying the cricket yeah went down to the cricket saw Marnus get his double ton saw Nathan Lyon take a few wickets saw New Zealand shit the bed Wendell but they didn't shit the bed as bad as our Prime Minister did over the break and yes Wendell Wendell you're here Wendell Hussey the Sylvia Jeffries of the Diamond Tina Shire how are you Wendell Very well. Excited to be back as well. Now, Errol just touched on the leader of of, of our nation, Scotty from Marketing. I believe we were the first to coin that term. Has since been referenced elsewhere in other media, Financial Times, London, New York Times. Washington uh, Post. Kevin Rudd's FB page. Getting a bit of traction on old Scotty from Marketing, but he's had a shocker. A shocking month. He has. We'll kind of pick up where we left off last year, Wendell, and so we'll go back to kind of the start of this whole saga where Scott was in the bed. He he had shit, but it hadn't started to leak out the side of his Bond's wife runs into the sheets yet. Yeah, it was just coming through. What was the headline there? Scotty from Marketing selflessly cuts week-long Hawaiian holiday short by 45 minutes. Yes, we published that story a little while ago. It must have been before Christmas because it was his pre-Christmas getaway that he insisted on going on. At the peak of this summer's bushfire season, there was a heat wave and his office were not answering calls and not clarifying where he was. In fact, in, in many uh, instances, just denying claims that he was on holidays in Hawaii with the family. But uh, eventually it became clear that Scotty from Marketing, member for Cook, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, was actually on holidays, and that was made clear and clarified by an Instagram photo that someone got on Waikiki Beach with the Prime Minister, who was wearing a daggy wet shirt and having a corona. Throwing up a shaka. Mm-hmm. Throwing up a shaka, which I believe is a, um, a Hawaiian hand sign for hang loose. But in saying this, you know, everyone does deserve a holiday, even when you're the Prime Minister of a country, you are entitled to a holiday. And, and I'm glad that Scott did, some weeks ago, put the family first and decide to spend some time away with them after what was a very easy year for him. But going away in the middle of a bushfire crisis just at the start i guess you know was probably the first trickle of feces down the man's pale white ass cheek before it indeed started to seep into his thousand thread count egyptian cotton sheets yes they're at the lodge on that flight back home there was a passenger from town who commented on that story and he let us know that they actually did move scotty from marketing from the exit row seat because at that time he refused to assist in the event of a disaster. And of course, this story started to snowball quite quickly. A few days after that story, we broke another one about the Prime Minister's questionable leadership, and that was Nation just kind of accepts Albo unofficially taking over Prime Ministerial duties. There's one thing we might have learnt after the Christchurch shooting was that our Prime Minister, while good on, on the campaign trail, isn't particularly good in a crisis. Unlike his rival in the 2019 election, who was the exact opposite, Bill Shorten, yes, a charisma vacuum and um, rather unlikable, almost humorless, but... He could he, lead. He could, well, he, he, he showed his medal during Beaconsfield. That's where he became a household name. We're yet to see any of that from Scotty from Marketing. And in a weird turn of events, the ninth string Labor bloke that took over the party leadership after the shock 2019 election loss has just taken over as Prime Minister, sort of. Yes, some have moved to attribute his desire to actually do something good to the fact that he was mentored by the likes of Bob Hawke and Tommy Uren down there in New South Wales, rather than the Hillsong pastor and low-rent marketing professionals or the many knees of the New South Wales police force that Scott obviously had to sit on as a child when he was babysat by the 
various members of that esteemed organisation. And in the wake of that prolonged bedshit from Scotty, the nation began to understand why Scotty got the arse from all those marketing jobs. Well, not too many people know this about Scott Morrison, but he is the architect behind the 100% pure New Zealand ad campaign for New Zealand, and of course, more commonly known, the Where the Bloody Hell Are You campaign from about 10 years ago here in Australia. But... One other thing that a lot of people don't know is that Scotty got the arse from both of those jobs, not from a lack of trying, not from not getting the results. He got the arse because he was being fucking dodgy. And when you can't do in this life, what do you do, Wendell? You enter politics. You seek pre-selection in a safe liberal seat in the Cronulla region, replacing Bruce Baird, father of the iconic and uh, equally as charismatic Mike Baird, former Premier of New South Wales, and equally as Pentecostal. Then you're set for life. And following that realisation by the nation, Peter Dutton quietly began learning how to count. Yes, that that article was written more recently, just as we've seen Scotty from marketing under siege from people he would have once thought were on his side. Piers Morgan, famous British Conservative, New South Wales Transport Minister, Andrew Constance. Uh, A lot of people have been throwing barbs at the Prime Minister in the media, live interviews, particularly. It's an interesting time. You know, you've got to imagine the the last four Prime Ministers we've had, if any of them had handled a crisis like this, they would have been ousted. In the end, we ousted most of our previous Prime Ministers based on their personalities and uh, how unlikable they were as people. But when it comes to leading the nation, it seems there's a lot of confidence lost, and Peter Dutton looks like he's taking advantage of that. His poor numeracy skills that, of course, let him down in the famous lip spill of August 2018, uh, now going to be on show once again. So he's polishing them up. He's been in touch with 13006555506 and has been practicing his counting while he sharpens his knives in the background of the party room. It's worth adding that in the wake of the last lib spill, Scott Morrison made sure that he wasn't going to get stabbed again and he adopted a similar rule that the Labor Party's had for quite a while where he needs a two-thirds majority um, and he also needs a few other rubber stamps from higher powers. So we certainly don't hope that Peter Dutton knows that and I hope that he once again calls a spill and finds out that he doesn't need half, he needs two-thirds. Yes, the anti-spill laws in the Liberal Party aren't as intense as the ones in the Labor Party. The Labor Party needs over half of the members nationwide to vote, whereas in the Libs you only need two-thirds of the party room, which you know is very much doable, and we've seen it happen before. It's a tricky assignment, but if anyone can do it, Peter can. Now, there's been a lot of doom and gloom in this bulletin, so we might move on to a slightly lighter story from New Year's Eve. Guest who brought terrible beer to friends' barbecue seen drinking everything but it. Yes, that's what happens when you turn up to a party with a carton of Tui's Extra Dry, isn't it, Wendell? You always end up drinking someone else's. Because oh, Tui's Extra Dry is always on special because it fucking sucks. I don't mind the uh, the, the Ted's. I, I particularly enjoyed the Platinum's. Back when I still had my license, I really did enjoy. This bloke who came into the party with a carton of Ted's was spotted sucking back a couple of Canadian clubs and dry. Which, mind you, in this heat, in this horrible heat that we have to endure here on the fringe of the Simpson Desert... I'm known to enjoy. Moving on to sports news now, an out-of-form older cousin emits aggressive sound as he fires off reckless bouncer. Yes, the incident occurred on Christmas Day in Batuta Heights and saw a former sporting great turned sports betting great prove to his extended family that he does indeed still got it. Yeah, he certainly put on a lot of chin music on Christmas Day from all reports, especially the report that we got from his 12-year-old cousin. He says he can't wait to grow up and give his older cousin a full factory reset of the brain with his fists. In the comments, Phil Johansson, I'm not sure if it's spelt the same way as Sir Joe, Phil Johansson uh, left a comment. He said he dominated his 10-year-old son with a great display of swinging the blade, 123 retired before taking his wicket cheaply after a short but sharp barrage of body line bowling. Now that is a Christmas story. That is low self-esteem that's finishing on top and we'll finish this bulletin the first one for 2019 we'll be back again in another seven days time be sure to join us then until then i'm wendell hussey and i'm errol parker and i'm clancy overall please donate to the fireys celeste barber is your best go-to for that 
at this moment. Uh, a lot of hard work going on in the field. So please, please dig deep.